Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Practical Farm Research Report. I'm Deatra Grimo, the Data and Logistics Manager here at the Atlanta, Indiana facility and today I'm here with Casey McGuire from Pattern Ag. We're going to be diving into soil health and soil DNA testing. Casey, what exactly is Pattern Ag? Yeah, thanks Deatra. Really happy to be here and to talking to all of you guys here watching the video. Uh, so Pattern Ag is a soil science company that is focused on unlocking the potential of that living layer of the soil. So what we do is we pull soil samples and then we scan the DNA in that soil sample mm -hmm. to see what's living in your fields. What exactly are you analyzing whenever you're pulling the soil DNA? What type of agronomic factors? Yeah, so uh, the main thing that Pattern Ag is focused on delivering to growers right now is analysis on the pest and pathogen loads in fields. So growers would be able to see what diseases they have in higher or lower quantities across their operation to make more informed input decisions. Uh, this year we're also doing kind of a limited launch into the rest of the stuff living in your soil. So things like uh, the microbiology that affects fertility mm -hmm. as well as some of the soil health indicators from that uh, living component of soil. So Casey, in regards to being able to analyze the DNA of the soils, you're able to do this because a lot of the genomes have been sequenced of the different pathogens that are in the soil? Yep, so we have a proprietary library of pests and pathogens that we scan against the soil samples as we pull them. And that allows us to get down even to the species level on a lot of the really common uh, things like nematodes. In regards to best management practices when it comes to pulling soil samples and soil DNA testing, what sort of things should someone be looking out for? Are there a recommended amount of samples to take? Are there better times of year to sample? How many times a year should we be sampling? Yeah, uh, I like to kind of make a custom plan with the growers to make sure that we're solving what questions they have. So uh, most of our growers do a year over year analysis. Okay. So we wanna make sure that we're just sampling at pretty much the same time to make sure we're comparing apples to apples mm -hmm. year over year. Um, we also have some growers who are doing kind of a multi-sequenced in season mm -hmm. if they really wanna track the changes over a particular season with a, maybe a trial that they're mm -hmm. doing or that kind of thing. So we really try to customize the plan to answer whatever questions the grower has. Mm -hmm. When a farmer is looking at testing with Pattern Ag, what sort of results can they expect from your testing? So when growers get the results back, they'll see kind of subfield variability in pathogens mm -hmm. as well as a um, comparison field over field and a farm average. Mm -hmm. So that helps them kind of benchmark the pathogens that they're most concerned about. For example, rootworm mm -hmm. or nematodes, uh, some stock root rots, things mm -hmm. like that, soil borne pests mm -hmm. and pathogens. Um, then they can kind of look at their input decisions and make sure that they're putting the right products on the right acre. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, seed treatment on beans, mm -hmm. you know, do they need to have a higher rate of a seed mm -hmm. treatment active or things like that to make sure that they're properly protected. Um, if they want to go back to some more conventional corn mm -hmm. in different places, where would be the right place to try mm -hmm. that? Um, really, so any of the input decisions that they make, they could also just kind of filter those through mm -hmm. the layer of pattern ags analysis okay. to make sure that they're spending the right dollar on the right acre. Mm -hmm. How does understanding the soil microbial community in a field impact a grower's yield and profitability in regards to soil health? Yeah, so there's so much going on in that mm -hmm. living layer of soil that affects crop outcomes. You know, we talked a lot about the pests and the pathogens mm -hmm. that, you know, most growers are very familiar with what they can do to your bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, and there's obviously a lot of dollars that go into trying to make sure you're properly protected, right? Um, but then there's a whole host of other uh, things in that living layer of the soil, such as microbes that affect fertility, which is kind of why we're out here today yeah. to talk about the nutrient management uh -huh. study. We're going to look at the mineralizing and solubilizing mm -hmm. microbes for phosphorus and potassium mm -hmm. to see if, you know, if those affect when the available fertility is there for the plant. Um, there's also things that uh, are kind of working for the favor of your plant, like uh, plant growth promoting microbes, things that help the plant germinate quickly and develop a strong root mass. Mm -hmm early in season. So it, it can actually affect the soil microbiome can affect the plant's progress through the entire season. Mm -hmm. You touched a little bit on the nutrient management study broadcast versus banded that we're going to be pulling soil samples on today. That study also has a few other elements to it that we will be looking at in our practical farm research department. There are three different tillage practices that are implemented on that study as well. Conventional till, no-till, and strip till, as well as various rates of potash and MAP. What sorts of things do you think we'll be able to tell from the research that Pattern Ag is going to be doing with us on that study? Uh, the practical farm research uh, plots that you guys have out here are fantastic for studying the microbial communities, which is why we love uh, partnering with you guys in this space. Um, 
And to answer that, honestly, we're not sure yet, which is mm -hmm. why we're doing it more in the R&D space instead of uh, in a commercial space. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to see um, from the different rates of the uh, P and K that you guys are putting mm -hmm. down, as well as the different application methods and the different tillage practices, you know, um, how does that affect those uh, mineralizing and solubilizing mm -hmm. microbes that really uh, allow P and K to become available to the plant. Mm -hmm. So really excited to kind of see of those uh, practices that you guys do, mm -hmm. how is that affecting kind of those those microbes that you can't necessarily see and ultimately uh, your, you know, the yield on those acres as well. So when are microbes more active in the soil? Are there certain environments or times of the year that we can have higher populations that could kind of fluctuate? Yeah, so um, whenever the, the soil gets below 55 degrees, mm -hmm. most of the microbial activity slows to stops. Um, and so you kind of have this pause from about mm -hmm. harvest to about planting with a relatively stable microbial uh, consortia in mm -hmm. your fields. And that's why the majority of our sampling kind of goes on post-harvest mm -hmm. because they have all winter to kind of analyze the results and get a plan for mm -hmm. the start of the next season. Um, as those soil temps warm, most microbial uh, populations uh, kind of hockey stick mm -hmm. as they get started and they have these host plants to, mm -hmm. to you know, potentially feed on and all sorts of other stuff. So um, as the season goes on, especially when the conditions are right, you can see big swings in that microbial uh, population. Okay. We're definitely excited to see those results. So another study that we did earlier this year was on our long-term tillage study with a continuous corn cropping system and a rotation of corn and soybeans in conventional and no-till that we've had for a long time at Beck. So a lot of people are very familiar with that study. So what kind of results have we seen from that from Pattern Ag? Yeah, we pulled those samples uh, over the winter and we, we analyzed some key uh, high economic value pests and pathogens for those space. And I would say we saw kind of exactly what you would expect to see, which is that in the areas that were uh, corn on corn for many, many years, there was almost no sudden death or soybean cyst nematode. Whereas the, the areas of the field that had a soybean rotation, which is that host plant, right? Mm -hmm. We did see significantly higher levels of both SDS and SCN. We also saw that the tillage affected the populations of SDS with the no-till areas having higher levels of sudden death syndrome. That, of course, that doesn't take into account those beneficial microbes that that no-till practice kind of can mm -hmm. help with uh, that can keep it in check, but it did show that the populations were higher in the no-till. And that's a wrap for this edition of our PFR report. Casey, thank you so much for coming out with Pattern Ag and helping us in our practical farm research department implement data-driven results from understanding soil health and soil DNA. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below for more interaction with PFR and check out the description box about Pattern Ag. Thanks and have a great day.